By the late 60s, he would have been forced to address the more detailed types of literature involving the study of doctrine and the church fathers. His early theological notes show an interest in various doctrines and practices of Catholicism and also show a concern with patristic accounts of the nature of Christ. At some point, however, he went beyond the standard anti-Catholic abusive positions that would be expected of a Protestant student and he came to loathe the central elements of orthodox theology, most notably the doctrine of the co-equality of the Holy Trinity. To make this clear, he believes that God is completely different and separate from the other two members of the Holy Trinity. He's utterly unlike physically his son, Jesus Christ. Not only was the Holy Trinity false, according to Newton, but a detailed examination of church history would reveal just how the pristine apostolic religion had been corrupted by Catholic Trinitarians, most notably in the 4th and 5th centuries after Christ. Newton now added a rigorous, if exceptionally unorthodox, study of the Fathers, which gave detailed information about the sort of history of the Church Newton now believed to be true. His pronounced anti-Catholicism and his commitment to a severely heretical anti-Trinitarian view, in which God was immeasurably greater than his Son, conditioned the way in which he understood the work of Mead, which he took to be foundational, and also the history of the early Church. In Newton's scheme, all aspects of Trinitarian Catholicism were diabolical and all the villains of Catholic and Protestant historiography were heroes. The real action centred on the 4th and 5th centuries after Christ was born. And for Newton, there was nothing special at all about the Reformation. He almost never talks about it. He almost never talks about Luther or Calvin. Uh, 